everybody, JCB here at The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest Reviews. <laughs> As many of my long-term subscribers know, I'm actually in a rock band, and lately, we've been recording our latest album, and we're just about to the point where we have to start doing vocals, so of course, I've been looking at all kinds of different vocal mics. In the past, we've used the MXL 990, this Russian-made Octava 219, and I've experimented with various other microphones in search of finding something we love without spending a lot of money, mainly because we don't have a lot of money. The key to a good microphone is transparency, at least in rock vocals. Basically, you want a microphone that sounds like the singer when you record with it. You don't want to add a bunch of color or a bunch of different effects or anything just by having a different kind of microphone. Now, of course, there are other instances where you might want some added bass response, for instance, or other tonal coloring, such as in radio or television broadcasts. If you're doing voiceover work, you might reach for something that sounds a particular way instead of featuring the most accurate reproduction. And that's actually how I first came across the Audio-Technica AT2035. You see, during the day, I work at a high school, and we actually have a student-run radio station called Pirate Radio that is actually the very first high school radio station to ever be picked up by iHeartRadio. So be sure to check that out. It's Pirate Radio uh, as part of Encore High School. Check that out if you're interested at all. I'm not on it, but it is a really cool radio station run by some really cool kids. To prepare the station for this new medium, they purchased a few of these AT2035 microphones, which retail for about $150 online. And in my never-ending search for amazing gadgets at affordable prices, I asked if I could borrow one of these bad boys and try it out. So for this review, I'm going to be doing an old-fashioned microphone shootout using the AT2035, that geek microphone I reviewed a little while back, as well as the MXL990 my band uses all the time, and the MK219 that we used on our last record. But first, let's do the unboxing. The front of the box says Audio-Technica 20 Series AT2035 Cardioid Condenser Microphone. Large diaphragm for smooth natural sound and low noise. The right side just has a logo, and the left has a photo of the mic and its accessories. The bottom has some bamboo and a close-up of the microphone's grill. Not sure what that's about. And the back has nothing of any real interest. When you open it up, the box contains the bag and shock mount, as well as the microphone itself and some instructions. Here's the frequency response curve. It looks pretty flat with a little bit of a bump here at the high end, and there is of course a roll off switch that will high pass everything below 80 hertz by 10 decibels. As always, whenever I do one of these microphone shootouts, I'm gonna be testing these microphones in their natural neutral state. I'm not gonna be adding any pop filters, I'm not gonna be adding any EQ or compression or anything like that. I might do some gain compensation just because the human ear has a tendency to mistake louder for better, and we don't really want that changing our opinion of these microphones. I'm not going to be using any of the roll-off switches. Many of these microphones do have a roll-off switch. None of those will be engaged because I want to hear what these microphones sound like naturally and neutrally. If you have watched any of these previous microphone reviews, you know I always do these tests with the same song. It's a song that I wrote for my band and it's called Heartbroken, and the reason I use this song is twofold mainly because I'm actually going to be recording this song at some point for the album, and if I'm testing a microphone, I might as well test it with something I'm actually going to be recording. But the second reason is that this particular part of this particular song has a lot of plosives, which means you're gonna really be able to hear the pops of the P's and the hiss of the S's, and I wanna see how these microphones handle that. This song also has a dramatic change in volume at this part, which allows us to see how these microphones handle dynamic volume changes. Once again, we'll be testing the MK219, the MXL990, the AT2035, and the Geek microphone. First up is the MK219. This is a Russian-made microphone. It's pretty old. You can get it also for right about 150 bucks online. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed, memories on repeat, playing in her head like a record in her mind. Locked herself in her room in her empty home. Silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone. And she reaches the ending one more time. Second on the testing block is the MXL 990. Now this is technically a $99 microphone, but I actually got it in a two pack with an instrument mic. So that really makes it kind of more like a $50 microphone. Anyway, we've used this microphone a lot on our previous albums. We always keep coming back to it for some reason. So let's see how it holds up. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed. Memories on repeat, playing in her head like a record in her mind. 
Locked herself in her room in her empty home. Silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone. As she reaches the ending one more time. Next, we have this uh, Geek microphone that I bought from the Geek app a while back. I did a whole review on that before. Uh, this microphone cost me $35, and I still use it just about every day, whether it's for gaming or for recording demos for my band. It's pretty versatile. Let's see how it holds up against these other two microphones. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed. Memories on repeat, playing in her head like a record in her mind. Locked herself in her room in her empty home. Silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone. And she reaches the ending one more time. Lastly, we have the AT2035. This is by Audio Technica. As I said before, it costs right about $150 if you buy it new online. So let's see how it holds up against these other three microphones. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed, memories on repeat, playing in her head like a record in her mind. Locked herself in her room, in her empty home, silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone, as she reaches the ending one more time! So I've now listened to these recordings more times than I care to admit, using both my studio speakers as well as some studio headphones that I have. And I gotta say, I now hate my own voice even more than I did before I started this review, and that's really saying something. But the end result is, I still keep coming back to this stupid MXL 990, and I don't know why, but it seems to be the most accurate reproduction of my voice. I'm sure if I had like a thousand dollars or more to spend on a microphone, I could find something that beats this damn thing, but so far nothing's really come close. Now that's not to say that the AT2035 sounds bad, that is certainly not the case. In fact, none of these other microphones are really any better than the AT2035, it's just that this MXL 990 works really well with my voice musically for some reason, and again, I don't really know why that is. That being said. Just because the AT2035 didn't hold up against this stupid thing doing rock vocals doesn't mean it's not worth every penny of the $150, and here's why. At the start of each take, I would say which microphone I was about to test, and I noticed that for speech, the AT2035 sounded silky smooth. This is the Audio-Technica 2035. It made my voice sound kind of rich and deep and almost sexy, which is not at all what my voice naturally sounds like, but it's pretty cool if you're doing a radio or television broadcast or something like that, which gave me an idea to try a few different vocal styles with this microphone. You're listening to Public Radio. I'm your host, Boring McBoringson, and today we're going to be talking to a representative from a district of about 400 people from a state you would never think to visit. That's coming up this hour on Public Radio. Whoa, wake up party people! It's 7 a.m. and that means it's time for Boner in the Morning! I'm your host, Jonathan Boner! <laughs> uh, you know what that sound means. It's time for our Top 40 Fart Down, where we count down the same Top 40 classic rock songs we've been counting down for the last 40 years. Uh, the fact of the matter is that people who disagree with me are all stupid and evil, and I am a genius who will tell you everything you want to hear. By the way, be sure to check out my new book, 50 Things You Probably Already Know I'm Going to Say. Mulligan steps up to the T. He's about 200 yards to the green. Oh, he clearly missed the ball that time, but we're all just going to ignore that, pretend it never happened, and that will not be counted against his final score. Star Wars Episode VIII, The Last Jedi, is the latest installment of the Star Wars saga, and me personally, I can't wait to see it in theaters. Plus, we have all kinds of cool new merchandise and toys to look forward to, which is all very cool. Very cool. Hey everybody, JCB here at The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest Reviews. If you haven't guessed yet, I've actually been recording this entire video using the AT2035. And it sounds pretty good, right? I mean, for speech, this thing's freaking amazing. 
Compared to the MXL 990, this thing isn't perfect for rock vocals, at least not with my voice, but maybe it'll work better with yours. Either way, it's definitely worth it if you're doing a podcast or radio show of some sort where you're going to be doing a lot of speaking. Heck, I would use this every day on my own YouTube channel. So what do you think? Do you agree with my test results? Would you ever consider buying the AT2035? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as I release new videos every week. And until next time, keep being awesome. We're thinking about how the cable could break while you're falling, or the brakes could fail, or maybe the whole ride just breaks down. Now you're stuck at the top of this giant tower, unable to get down. Then Lex Luthor finishes his sentence, and the music swells to a finale. You brace yourself for the fall and nothing. That's weird. Oh shit!